Yo, bros and guys, happy new year. Hope you're doing well. I'm finally feeling a little bit better. Kind of was in a lull the last three days, just like... Mostly nostalgia and... Thinking about life, honestly. Uh, I did a lot of breathing, a lot of meditating. Checking up on old friends and... I'm feeling the will, the will to go on a little longer here. Talk, talk about a couple New Year's plans for the channel and play, play a little bit of After Image. This is kind of just a backdrop. I'm not really gonna. This isn't gonna be an intense After Image session or anything like that. Especially with all these confusing ass routes that I'm gonna get lost down trying to make a commentary. While I navigate these tunnels here. I really need a map button, but I'm a stubborn man. Frustrating. Ooh. Oh god, of course. Now what are you about up here? The elevator system in this game is kind of crazy though. Uh oh. Big boy HP now. We weren't doing well enough already. Oh, I love this game. Yeah, I, I feel like the evolution of the Metroidvania genre is like... Somewhere in between games like this and Hollow Knight. And you just keep upping the productions and, and story, their production value in the story, and... You know, you can see Metroidvanias being really good for the next couple decades, honestly. Even evolving into, like... More than what they ever were. Emerald Falls. The amount that I have to use this map, though. There's a very good chance I'm going to switch back to my other controller or something. I don't know what to do here. Could take away one of my quick slot buttons. and That's an option. This doesn't help, does it? I was watching Clipper, she's a girl speedrunner, a grill, and uh, I was watching her do some Link to the Past and it was kind of getting me interested in that game again. I always did mean to give that game one last hoorah, but... Back then, I guess, wasn't the time. What the heck? That guy is weak.
come on! <laughs> Alright, you got old Emerald Falls. You got this sort of back entrance over here that we just found. Oh yeah, Town of the Exile, that's what we found right before. Now I remember. are all these things. connected. Alright, this area is starting to make a little bit more sense now. Game so map heavy if you if you're not playing it really all in one day. Learn my lesson, man. Oh, I can't cut that stream, I guess. Yeah, but it's the good old New Year's. Had a good meal today. Did some good exercise yesterday. I go for a walk after. I play this crap. Yeah, I was already going to get back into fighting games at some point, and this seems like... Oh, God. A good time to do it because just because of Rivals 2 and... Garu, Mark of the Wolves. I got some interest in that game. Or whatever, I think that's what... Or whatever the hell that new Garu game is going to be called. Yeah, I do actually want to play more of this, but I don't... I'm so sick of pressing this map button on my keyboard, it's actually making me want to fix that problem and not have to deal with it anymore. I'm not really gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be into that new League of Legends, or that new uh, Project L fighting game, whatever League of Legends fighting game. 
I think Rivals 2 and then the future of the Smash Bros. Guilty Gear. Grand Blue Fantasy. I don't, I don't really see myself needing, you know, much more fighting games other than those. It would have to be something really special. Something that kind of blows a lot of those games out of the water. In some type of way, you know. For me to, like, want to spend a lot of time with it or spend more time with it than those other games. And I will get back to Street Fighter 6 at some point. I don't think I'm ever going to take that game extremely seriously. I'll just be kind of a casual on that game. Which is fine with me. Someone's got some HP for once around here. Oh, not if you use the double sword. The double slash. Oh, we're climbing on rooftops. Climbing on the rooftop. No, it is out of I should know, because I was born in the time, but I don't know, because I'm not that good of a music fan, honestly. I was, it's one of those things, like, if you met me at the right time, like, I was big, big, big into music, you know? But I'm not the kind of guy who sticks around with that kind of shit. Like, I listened to it when it meant something to me, if that makes sense. Like, when I had those friends in high school, and I had those first crushes from high school, and I had those groups that, like, we would group of friends, and we sit around and play video games, and wish we had hot girl friends, and wish we had some weed, and wish we were actually not nerds, and... And you would, like... You would get into that sort of, like, emo boy fucking, like, high schooler mentality, and then that music just meant so much more, you know, if that makes sense, you know? You know, the Blink-182, the Weezer, Foo Fighters, all the, the class, you know, the classic generic boy fucking American rock stuff or whatever. I don't think all those guys are American. But just, you know what I mean, like... If you grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s, like, the, a lot, and you were a guy and you, like, had any type of emotions or you had any type of, like, teen angst or, like, any type of, like, wondering where life is going, which is a lot of people. It's almost every person, right? There was a good chance that you, you might have had that vi or that phase in your life, too, you know what I mean? That rebellious-ass phase where you go from being, like, the nerd in school to being, like the badass dude that some of the chicks that used to ignore you and now they start wanting you and shit and when you're going through all that shit that music just is different you know what i mean i still like i still like those songs it's just it doesn't it's you know what i mean it's not like bringing back that feeling now it's just kind of like nostalgia bait you know what i mean it would take a new song that's new to me and and a new vibe of, like, romance and friendship uh, accompanying it. Like, it would take all of that for me to have those feelings again, you know? To truly have those feelings again. You can always get shades of old feelings, but I'm talking about the real deal, you know? What, am I playing Ghost Song? What is this? <laughs> kind of want to play Shovel Knight again. I should have bought it, but... I was, I'm was i stubborn because I just feel like they hold their game... At too high of an esteem. <laughs> like, yeah, it's awesome, but also you guys could have made, like, Shovel Knight 5 by now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we would have loved it, and you just won't do it. Okay, another backtracky. What the hell is that guy? He was, like, there, and then he's gone, and he's there. Yeah, that's a little bit about my old music vibes. I still do like music, like I said, and I do want to get back into it at some point. It's just... It's not for me right now. It's just all, all there is to it, honestly. Games like this are for me, you know what I mean? Like, I love this art. I love the idea that you could be a solo dev and make something better than this at this point, and this is great 
You know what I mean? Not I'm not trash talk. What I'm just saying, like, it's very possible. It's just that stuff. That kind of shit just interests me so much more now. You know, like. Sort of going from the guy who used to like to take in the vibes that the world gave me and to grow up with them. You know, gr I was growing up with those emotional songs and movies and, and stuff. And they were helping me through school and they're helping me with friendships and, and, and everything. Getting used to life as a youngin. But now it's like. It just doesn't do it the same for me now, you know? And, like, I don't even play the... I like I like games and everything, but I don't feel like I play games just out of enjoyment of video games, you know what I mean? Like, I literally play it like it's a mission, you know? Like, I play it like it's part of my life. Like, it's, it's part of where I want to go and what I want to do. And it's part of my memories as well. And it connect, it's the one thing that really, truly connects me with my past. You know, if that makes sense. Like when I was a kid, I pay, I played them purely for enjoyment and purely for to have something fun to do that I loved that wasn't thinking about shit ass school. You know what I mean? Like that that was why I liked games when I was a kid. And now it's just different. But actually, if I the more I get the more I, like I said, I was I've been kind of held down by nostalgia for a long time lately. But that's why I made this commentary because I kind of wanted to break out of that shell a little bit and get talking and get get excited about the new year and everything. It'd be cool if that guy could like sort of curse you and you like couldn't attack for a little bit or something. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. Oh, I probably could have bounced off one of these. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like they force you into tanking shit, though. What? You got... No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, what's going on here? No, dude. Whatever. You should have known. It's too good to be true. Yeah, like, everyone's damaged less by this sword, but it's so good that it doesn't matter. first building. I was waiting for this moment. Fast transition there. I like that. There's a lot of these areas where they're like baiting you into checking for secrets and there's no secrets and then the secrets is just in like a flat wall somewhere. Not really, but a little bit. Whatever happened to me playing Link's Awakening on the, on the Nintendo Switch? I like that game. <laughs> there was something else I was playing while I was playing that game, and that's why... I don't know if it was Fire Emblem or something. I don't remember. It's just funny how that works. Like, sometimes I'll just, like, forget about a game I was having fun with, and it just you won't see it for, like, a year. <laughs> like, it's sitting right, like, two feet away from me, but I forgot about it. So you see it next year, I guess. Beloved Link, he's the town's hunter and the most devout. He's gone to help Oz, the master mage, and hasn't been back in days. Can you help me find him? If I see him, I'll tell him to return. I don't think I ate too much candy again, damn. <laughs> too many sweets. He's been up all night for the ritual. What's well, new, though? We're helping her with her ghostly friend. Or her ghostly husband. So we got a little bit of story going on here. I'm a sucker for a decent bit of story, that's for sure.
As, as happy as I am with, like, the last, like, five years of Metroidvanias, it's, just, it's still kind of weird to me that no one's, like, really came in and taken over the joint, you know what I mean? Oh, I got more heals, too. Oh, shit. Sure. Right. That one was obvious. Nice, nice. Maybe we can make more use of that. Somehow. We got that big ass Dark Souls tanky build fucking HP bar so far. I'm a sucker for over over or having too much HP and bullshitting games like this with HP. <laughs> it's kind of my thing. I mean, I guess choose your way you want to bullshit the game, but that's just how I do it. Got some unexplored down here somewhere. Okay. Someone's threatening as hell. As hell, as heck. Oh, a lot of backtrack going on in this area. They literally, for some reason, this dash reminds me of Castlevania Harmony of. Or what's it called? Fuck. Harmony of Dissonance? Is that... The, I forget. That might be the wrong one. Mm -hmm. I should know. It's, it was the second one for the Game Boy Advance. I know that. Anyway, so we got a lot of teleporty type enemies. That's cool. I think that works well with their combat style in this game. Waiting for this. Came a little faster than I thought it would. LOL, Cuck W. What's that? Did I get that? It's clearly a secret. And I clearly know how to get it, I just figured it out. All was a lie. I didn't figure out anything. I thought I was... I thought I was cool, but I'm not that cool. Oh, we're coming from the bottom there. Okay. I got it. I got it. Broken one, bro. Okay. And we gotta check the map, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Like, I don't want to ruin my experience of this game by, like, having such shit keybinds that it frustrates me. You know what I mean? But it's also, at the same time, I'm too lazy to fix it. And my controller literally just needs one more button and I would be fine. I could also change my pause button, which I, that's what I might do just to be e make it easier myself. I'll change my pause button to my map button and then we'll use the keyboard to go to the pause menu instead. Which might be annoying for some boss fights and might fuck me up and get me killed, but whatever. <laughs> as long as I can open up that map on command, that's all I really care about. Most of the time I... Whoa, whoa did I just... Oh, you can go diagonal. That's cool. You can go backwards diagonal too. I didn't even know that. Hence the reason why I was surprised. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Some goodies up there. And I can see how to get them too, but... I think. They see they like they're like, hey, this is a backtrack area. You can't get anything here. But then if you look closer, you're like, oh, look what I can get here. I should have tried harder to get on that platform. Yeah, I really want to finish Record of Lodos War and um, check out 
Ender Lilies after this game for some reason. I feel like those games would slap for me right now because of just because of this game. Having been so fun. Oh, I bopped off the top of the ceiling somehow. Got a gate, a big important gate here of some kind. This place is getting spooky, it's getting kind of crazy here. And that's a little treasure trove there that you gotta find out how to get. The classic Metroidvania killing the, the decently tough enemy through the floor like a douche. I don't know, man. There's nothing like a good Walmart hamburger. That's all I got to say about it. And then you cook some really nice, or steam some really nice veggies and just season them up perfect. A little bit of that hamburger fucking fat juice in there. You don't even need butter. I mean, you can have it if you want, but you don't even need it so good. I mean, you can you can make some damn good if you don't want to eat meat too. You can make some damn good tofu, pretty quick, and then eat some veggies along with it, and that's pretty good too. Sal Saldomic. Yeah, I kind of feel bad because I'm gonna be buying Momodora in a couple days, but I didn't finish Minoria. I don't know. Uh, but but Minoria is quite a bit different, so. There's that, too. Oh, good. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Thought I had to jump down from that upper area. The upper ep echelon. Epilon. Some fucking dick bag around here. Who's that guy? Who's that guy from SpongeBob? The Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman over here. Ready to shiver, shivy our, shiv, ready to shivy our timbers. I don't know what that means. Ready to timbers or shivy, our shivers or timbers. I don't even know what the phrase is. Honestly, shiv, shiver, shiver me timbers. Is that it? I haven't said that in forever. I don't know if I've ever said that. They're giving me a lot of potions. If you had a magic build, this game actually might work really well with that, especially if you're picking up all these potions like me. And you could like cheese some hard spots with your extra magic potions and stuff. Now we're leveling up again. There it is. Oh, I hit that shit back at him. Soon we're gonna hit some backtracks. Here's an elevator. Yeah, here's the backtrack. Oh, okay. Some new stuff. I'm not too worried about that right now. I don't know how much I'm gonna play right here with this crap map button stuff, but... We're like right in the thick of the maze part of this area too. We've now seen most of the path, most of the paths it looks like. Alrighty, some gooey, gooey, gooey gumdrops underneath us. Here's a little ad additional secrets area it looks like. Oh, what am I playing? A turn of Noctis here? What the hell is this? I should have known. <laughs> I was wandering too far away from the fucking teleport or from the save point. And this guy is way out of my league. It's a girl with nice boobs. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that.
fuck, this one is not doable, guys. I don't know what to do. Oh, I figured it out. It's doable, guys. And it'll be easy because we can just health push. Oh, she's good looking good, though. The dimensional queen princess of jiggly 2D boob land. Oh, what am I playing? Eternal Octane? <laughs> I could use that so many times in this game, I feel like, and it just keeps on applying. The application never seems to fit. She tricked me too with her sh- I feel like I can pummel this girl. She's sucking me dry there. Let's go. Room key to the room of ritual. I gotta find out where that is. I also got clammy whistle. A strange shaped whistle that smells of lake. <laughs> oh, if it smells of lake, when at a certain location, the bearer can summon a mysterious. Okay. Not, not as fun as I thought I was gonna be. I thought I was gonna get something sick like a new movement ability. <laughs> Pleasant. Do you actually know how to whistle, Ifri? <clears throat> it's all soggy and smells like lake. <laughs> it smells of lake. Ooh. Oh, that's probably not for us. We're not mages. We're a beat down, beat down girl for now. Big HP, big damage. Thank you. For allowing Master Mage Aus's spirit to rest. I feel like I missed out on some of the story of this area before I fought that book. Another evil spirit resides here. Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. I'm no evil spirit. I'm Rosalia. I witnessed you defeating the Master Mage who had lost her mind long ago. So I revealed myself to give you thanks. But from the looks of you. <sighs> You're right. I am but a spirit. Unlike those evil spirits you've encountered around this place, though, I was lucky enough to keep my senses during the accident. Alas, those poor souls were once the town villagers. Huh. A conscious, independent spirit. A rarity. You mean there's a bunch of those? They're called women. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What caused you to become like this? This town never had many natural resources. Master Mage Aus showed us how to scrape by. We suffered, but we survived. God, however, couldn't bear to see us suffer. So she chose her messengers and brought us gifts. God graced the commoners with the ability to cast powerful spells so that they could keep the fierce monsters at bay and endure the harsh environment. God also taught Master Mage Aus the ritual of ascendancy by the power of the well. Once the ritual is complete, we could be freed from physical suffering, embracing true salvation and freedom. I don't think there's any salvation or freedom in your current state, huh? Yeah, so far, if I had if I had to say what's surprising me a lot about this game, it's it's like these backdrops combined with the the little bits of story that pop up in in almost a better way than Castlevania even did back on the Game Boy Advance and DS. And then you throw in the fact that you can like pick the order of bosses and 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 just like get these items early. Or you could do it in, in the order that seems a little easier. It's just something about that is really clicking in this game where I didn't, wasn't, I was expecting it to feel more generic and linear and it just doesn't really feel like that. Judging by some of the reviews, like 80% out of 100 positive reviews is, is re isn't really that good, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of games that are worse than this that are getting 90%, you know, easily, so. It's funny how that works. Like, people's tastes really differ, and 
And I do not agree with a lot of the Metroidvania uh, reviewers out there. You know, I don't think we've, I don't think we jive. Obviously, there's a there is a majority that agrees with me, but it's there's still those, quite a few, who harp on games like, like this and Soldiers and Eterna Noctis and stuff. And I'm just not seeing it. I'm trying to see how they could, you know, trying to see where the, where they're not liking it, but I just I don't see it. Two years ago, Master Mage Aus led the ritual for the villagers. As our souls were about to separate from our bodies, someone broke the well in town, interrupting the ritual. Most villagers lost their minds in the accident, transforming into evil spirits that had no choice but to wander. That explains the many evil spirits. I... Salvation? You mean separating your soul from your body? That seems... treacherous. Was it truly what God wishes for you? Only Master Mage Aus and the other Apostles could hear God's voice. I too have no inkling what God spoke. After becoming a spirit, I have been more relaxed and relieved than ever before. I don't need to sleep anymore, and I have forgotten the pains from hunger. However, the ritual was incomplete. Aww. I feel my life slipping away from me quickly. Yet nothing I do can reverse the flow. Common spirits cannot eat, nor can they return to the stream. Ifri is sorry. Looking at you now, no one has the power or the knowledge to aid you. Even Ifri. Shut up, Ifri. Your is You're an idiot. <laughs> Save her! It's been a long, long time now, and I've come to accept my fate. I cannot complain about my current predicament. It's all right. Let's Are you smoking, though? Rest. Girl's smoking out of pipe, see that? I have gifts to express my gratitude. Ooh. Okay. Faraway quest update, dude. I don't remember that quest off the top of my hand. And did we meet that girl before and I forgot? No, we didn't. We just met her now. And some of these magic attacks in this area are kind of crazy. Yeah, there must be a way to get way stronger magic because that shit is useless right now. Oh, nice. Oh, that was like free though. That was like a reward, extra reward for the boss. That almost kind of gave me too much of a reward for that easy of a boss fight though. Cool little treasure hollow back there. I don't know if you could have seen it through the ground over there. Do I have to hunt this guy down or what? I don't know. Someone's attacking me through the ground again. That means there's like hidden s juju secret around here. Probably in here somewhere, right? No, bro, what? What? Off into the boss direction. Oh, what the heck? Wrong button, dude. No way. 
say what's going on down here. Double secret. That's probably weaker than when I had one. Oh, I don't know. No, it's not. Causes Lux damage. Might be good around here. So I actually got something stronger than this. I wasn't expecting this area to give me that. Um... I can switch over to this one, but this one cuts the flow. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. Does that just mean it causes hydro damage? I don't understand. They haven't given us no magic. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's the actual close that. Ooh, I want to change them. Is there any advantage to this? String of magical power, but it doesn't tell me what it does. Adventurer headband is stronger than an ore helmet? What the hell? Wait, I recover HP with that too? I don't mind if I do. No boots, though. Still rocking the old kicks. Alright, good thing we got that little nook down. That was a pretty obvious secret, though. Now we should be slashing these guys. Find another one of those. An elevator. Now I'm getting kind of lost. Because I kind of just stumbled into that boss fight up there, and I was actually going to explore like some of these areas. Down here. Probably just hit up the save point quick and. Check around a little bit. I was gonna say, something weird is going on in this area. Oh, this guy's gonna be easy, but we got this overpowered sword.
I'm gonna say. This one was closer to the save point. So it made sense that it was easier. I didn't mean to cheese it that much, but what do you want from me? So... We get... A little experience gain with what we have. And here we get a little bit more damage. Well, I don't really need more damage, so we'll save that for later. Now this is going to bring us off into a never-ending goose chase, too. I wonder what's interesting about this. Wait, it's better? Alright. Yeah, apparently it doesn't, because it's giving me some mad HP and shit. I don't remember anything about this way. And there's probably nothing over here. And free XP. Don't mind if I do. Damn it. <laughs> he would. He would just get away with that. Missing something here? Is it supposed to be easy? <laughs> oh my god. I thought I did that. Save again. So that was an actual optional boss. It wouldn't do him in the speed run. Trying to go low and see what's down here in these catacombs. Oh, okay. Well, that's progress, progress for now. Possibly. Find a little secret sneaker. These guys are just feeding me levels like crazy here. area above me is a little odd. I'll let it slide. Emphasis on the slide. Looks like there's a secret hiding in here. We gotta be doing kind of good on money, right? Uh oh, actual spiders. What am I playing? Soldiers over here? Uh oh. Oh, I thought he turned into like a hazard. Maybe it hurts you when he explodes. Uh, see what I mean? The never ending goose chase effect. They want you walking into like four boss battles, yeah. This one's easier than that other girl. Or the boob the boob mage. Ow, maybe it's not that much easier though. Jesus, nice attacks.
Trying to style for the last hit. <laughs> I'm getting hit by the boss's attacks after he's dead. Ow! <laughs> you guys would. Oh shit. Are these like above my list strength level? Because they're doing all the damage. I'm gonna say that boss is a little tougher than I thought. And yep, the area after. It looks like they're over leveled for me. And then, of course, I want to go look at it just because of that. Well, at least we've got some fun stuff, fun progress for the next episode. If nothing else. No oh, fuck. Gun gotchas, you got secret art. Might be able to get that soon. Ow! Oh. <laughs> I don't know if this is hurting me. Or... I want to go back to a save point. Somebody save me. Yeah, it should just got real in this episode. They got three boss battles and they're all... Who the hell knows what order you're supposed to do them. Now well, more backtracky, secrety goodness here. And we didn't even go in this underground room, which will be easy to forget about. So I think I'm gonna hit the save point, and then we'll uh, continue this romp in the next episode because this stuff's getting pretty interesting around here, around these parts. I'd also like that map button fixed somehow. And we're like right, right up here, right? Yeah. And right below us was like the mini boss sort of thing. Yeah, I like the bosses. Sometimes they're just if you go to them in the wrong order, they're they get over, they're over with a little bit too fast. But that's better than a frustrating boss, that's for sure. Especially if you're trying to do it with no potions, then it's I feel like it's a lot. It's like just the funnest amount of challenge, or the perfect amount. Um. But yeah, that's pretty much the the New Year's commentary for today. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of after image. This game's been heating up. It seems like it gets better and better. Not that Soldiers doesn't get better and better. Soldiers definitely, I feel like it's is good right away, and it kind of just stays good. Well, this game kind of started off okay, and now it's, it seems like it's getting better and better. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll be returning to Link to the Past just for, like, nostalgia bait, and I wanted to do a little bit more on that game before I left it anyway, and now I kind of have some, some small streams that I like to watch of people who play it still, and there's a couple bonus categories I wanted to make up and run or you know just change the normal category a little bit and run something slightly different than other people so I was thinking about that also it was kind of like last year right around Christmas is when I uh, got into Link to the Past again for the first time in a long time and kind of wanted to revisit those days a little bit it's not going to be quite as drawn out as it was last time, last year, 2023. I think from like January to March, I played a lot. I don't think I'm gonna draw it out quite that long. I wanna get it, get some of this shit done kind of quick and be a little bit more effective and a little bit sweatier, a little bit try hardier. And so I was just mostly trying to have fun and learn on the box last time. This time I, I still wanna do that, but I wanna just be a little sweatier, do things a little bit more in a douchier kind of way, or I don't know, that douchier, but, no, it's not douchier, it's just, it's like, taking a game serious sort of way, it's not really douchey unless you think it is, but, it's not as fun as the fun way I played it before, though, that's for sure. Because if I did that last time, I wouldn't have any game to come back to. I would be coming back to like a 126 run and I would hate the game and never want to play it again. 
<laughs> so you could argue that it is kind of douchey sometimes when you rush when you rush to be good at something. Kind of how I rushed to be good at Halo with everyone else because I started late. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it's good now that I'm spent all those years and I got really good and it just has been a lifelong skill for me that's been fun and has helped me through my life. But at the same time, like, did I really need to get that good in the first few years? You know what I mean? It's not like that. Those, it's not like me being good those first few years completely changed my life or made me better now, you know? Like, yeah, it helped, but I don't know. I just feel like I... Sometimes I, I like, in my life, I would, like, steal fun away from myself by caring, wrong, caring in the wrong way about the stuff, you know? A lot of expectation and attachment and stuff like that. Not that those are always bad things, but they're part of life. It's just... They definitely can be bad things. Um, but yeah, so Link to the Past should be a kind of our little nostalgia bait for the beginning of the year. Definitely want to keep going through these indie games and just like getting my game developer mind ready so when I hit the field, like I can really go as hard as I always wanted to as a kid. Game, game, designing games is always my dream job as a kid and it didn't really make sense until about five years ago, but five years ago I was unfortunately in, in some bad times in my life, so you know what I mean. But now, you know, we got the advent of YouTube and so many tutorials on teaching and free game development software and so many people making games online or like offering their services online and helping others out and stuff. There's just not a better time like in the last three years. It's really be probably become the best time ever to become a game developer, honestly. So that so that's cool. And the skills are very, very transferable. So, like, you learn one how to work in one engine, you learn some coding, you learn this or that. It's always it's going to transfer. It's just how it is. So, while you see game development studios that are small or even one person sometimes, and they're making like full blown, sick ass looking games, and that some of them like do multiple genres. Like the guys who made the Messenger or Yacht Club, Club games, which did Shovel Knight, and now they're doing Minna. You know, or you've seen Rivals, and they made a 2D platformer with ver somewhat simple, some simple mechanics, not that it was all simple. And now they're making a full-blown 3D platform fighter that looks to be outclassing even Smash Ultimate in some in some regards. Obviously, there's a lot of things that Smash Ultimate does that no other platform fighter is going to do. Just the combos are better in Smash Ultimate. Overall, system mechanics are generally going to be cleaner and better. There is some clunk, for sure, in, in modern Nintendo Smash Bros. games. Some clunkiness that doesn't really need to be there, but you know what I mean. It's just like... Whether it's the six shield breaks or it's the planting an opponent into the ground and then belly flopping on him with King K. Rule, like they're just things that like you won't get in other fighting game and other platform fighters. You know what I mean? And even Rivals isn't gonna have some of that, but but Rivals, what what does Rivals have? Well, it has graphics on par with Smash Ultimate. I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not, but it, to me, they, they look on par. It's got more system mechanics. It's got smoother dash dancing, smoother inputs. I would assume, that, you know, there's... A, I don't think because it's 3D, like, these inputs are going to be laggy, like Smash Ultimate sort of is, and, and Brawl was even worse with slow, laggy movements slow leggy movement of characters as well um you know it's got parrying it's got the shields now we'll see how those work it's got other little mechanics that are new to platform fighters it's got way different characters than you know what i mean like their its characters are all varied like none of them are just off the top of my head, like, none of them are just, like, some stolen shit from Smash Bros or something, you know what I mean? They're all, like, 
their own character in the game. It's not just a ripoff or some shit. Which adds a lot to the game. I just I just have high hopes for Rivals 2, because I really like Rivals 1. I missed I missed the first like three, four years of it, which sucked, but you know. I wanna make up for it with Rivals 2, basically. Because I, I, I think that game's going to end up, in the next five years, being really, really good. It's going to start out good, and it's just going to be one of those games that just gets a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more along the way. And that's why coming, even though I came in late to Rivals of either, and I had already been kind of burnt out on platform fighters, it was still so fun, you know. Just couldn't stop playing it at one point. It was just like, I was waking up every day, like, ready to play some Rivals, you know. Um, but anyways, that's a little bit about some of the 2024 plans. Don't want to spend too much time making plans, but those are a couple of ideas I had. I'm not sure if I'm going to execute on everything, but we're going to do our best to, to do what we can. And should be fun seeing what we play on the Azeron this year. I want to play some like surprising games on there like Rayman Legends and stuff like that. That just you wouldn't expect on a, on a one-handed device. Um... Yeah, it should be good, though. But until Rivals comes around, we'll be doing uh, Guilty Gear, Grand Blue, and then most likely a little bit of Street Fighter Six and Rivals 1 before Rivals 2 comes out. Something like that. It's going to be quite a wait for Rivals 2, but I want to have a good year before then. I don't want to spend my year like just hoping for something like I did with Hollow Knight last year and stuff like that. Not that it's always a bad thing, it's just... I, I, I spent a lot of time, like, banking on some games coming out last year that just didn't come out, and it was just, you know, I kind of wish I was more, or I was less focused on those games and more focused on the games I had and other games that were good that I didn't even have that I could have bought for, like, five do five dollars, you know? Five dollars. I don't know what I was going to say. Five buckers. Um, but yeah, After Image again, highly recommend it. It's just, it's getting cheaper and cheaper, and it's just a, a, a really fucking good game for the price. If you can get over, like I said, that slight bit of jank, or not jank, the slight bit of generic Metroidvania-esque-ness, the slight bit of that. But like I said, that's pretty much in every Metroidvania now. I don't think I've even played anything besides Hollow Knight that, that didn't feel like it had some genericness in it, you know what I mean? It's just part of the genre, you know what I mean? It's like if you make a Mario game that's like Mario platforming, it's going to feel a little bit generic. It's just how it is, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you want to play? Do you want to play a platformer or not? You know what I mean? Do you want to play Metroidvania or not? You know, and, and this is one of those where it's like that, that quote-unquote genericness is completely overpowered for me by the expansiveness of the map the exploration is fun the secrets are fun the the items you get are fun it's fun trying to save your items and not even use them and just like play the game like that it adds for me it adds like the perfect amount of difficulty it makes it a lot of fun that's how i that's how i play most of my games i either play on normal or hard i never play on like the extreme mode and then i and then i try to make it just perfectly hard or di perfectly as difficult for me or whatever. I don't know. That's just how I do it. It's fun that way. It's fun and I get to improve at the games instead of playing on hard mode all the time and it's not fun. And yeah, I get to improve, but it's not that fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's brief moments of fun once in a while when I get past hard sections, otherwise it's just kind of painstaking for for no for no sake, you know, for no reason. Um, yeah, there's so much to get back to, so much to talk about, so I'm not gonna talk, you know, and I can't spend time talking about plans all the time, but just, just expect a lot of stuff for the channel, slowly trickling out video or two a day most of the time, and, uh, we should, we'll see where things go. Um, I'm going to get outside before it gets too dark. and That's pretty much it for me. I had a rough little Christmas 
period, but now I'm feeling good about the New Year's, and I kind of didn't, it was kind of sad because I didn't really have that, it was one of the first times in my life where my family was very distant on New Year's, and just things weren't going good for some of my family members on New Year's, and it didn't really feel like New Year's has always felt for me pretty much my whole life. It's always felt like a very good feeling. It's like a little scary because you're moving into the future, right? And it doesn't really matter because you're just moving forward one calendar day. But for some reason, it feels like you're also leaving your your past behind, right? And I think that's everyone feels like that. And uh, I don't know. This year, it just wasn't working for me unfortunately so i didn't really get it just kind of it was kind of a dark new year's and i'm not gonna lie but um like i said i'm i, well, I woke up today and i started to feel that new year's vibe i get or you know i didn't feel it the the day before and, and new year's night and everything but that's just a little bit of a, about my new year's and i know it doesn't matter that much but I like talking about it, especially if it, if it means that you're changing your life for the better or it means you're reflecting on your life or you're reflecting on your past or it means anything like that. I think that's a good thing. But I do think it's very important. I think if I'm looking back on, on a couple of my past years, I think it's very important whether you call them New Year's resolutions or not, I think it's very important to do your best on those first two months. Even if you're not perfect, you know. I just think something about something about setting yourself up in those first two months makes you such a stronger person. It shows that you're, no matter how old you get or where you are in your life, you're always willing to, you know, there's something about it. I don't know what it is. Like when you start a new school year and it was the first year you started off being healthy and making making moves for yourself in school or something. It's it's a lot like that. Because if you just start off the year and you don't try that hard and you treat yourself same old, same old, or you treat yourself like crap or whatever, it just sets such a bad precedent and where you could have had such a promising new vibe in your life you know what i mean i don't know that's just that's just what i think about it so it's been kind of important to me in the last five years that each year in the beginning of the year i make sure that that first chunk goes as good as i possibly can get it to go um so that's why i got back into yoga and that's why i'm taking a lot on a lot of challenges this year um those are just a few of the reasons I'm drinking a lot of water, eating a lot of good, nice, healthy meals. Um, got to eat a few less sweets, though. I mean, that's that's for sure. But I'll be working on that for sure. Um, yeah, I'll be on some boomer studios after this later today. I'm doing uh, some Azeron stuff on my Azeron. Uh, doing some fighting games. We're checking out Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising for the first time. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm always one of those guys where, like, I'm not the best, but when I go into a new game, I, my mind, like, it's really excited about it. And and I, I tend to pick up things very quick out of intuition, not really out of knowing anything concrete. Like, I just use kind of my gamer intuition, and because I'm excited about the game, it goes surprisingly... Well, that's usually how it goes for me. With Especially with fighting video games and, like, shooter video games, stuff like that. Kind of stuff that I, I, grew, I grew up with. Oh. And I haven't had a really nice group of friends to play fighting games with since like 2016 and that's a long time ago now so that's another reason why i really wanted to get into strive rivals 2 and grand blue because i feel like those are three going to be three good games where it's like you could definitely find that group of casual friends that you you know on discord or, or something and whether you guys talk often or not you guys play once in a while and it's a lot of fun and they're just friendly matches or you're just trying to make each other better and you're just trying to have fun and it just 
those are the kind of if you don't have those vibes i feel like you're just you're doing fighting games wrong you're doing them a disservice you know what i mean like you could be like oh, i don't like fighting games they're just the same thing over and over you just do the same combos every time it's you you know what i mean you could be like that but what does all that shit do like how does all that shit even hold a candle or even degrade the great experience that is having rivals and friends and and you know what i mean like for me that's what made smash bros so much fun even when i was like a kid and all i cared about was getting better at beating the computer so i could so i could beat my cousin one day or something you know what i mean those are like little childhood dreams of trying to be better than your older cousin or your older brother or whatever. You know what I mean? And then eventually, for you know, when I when I came back into it when I was a little bit older, it, it, it became more of like a community thing. And like I remember one time I just met some random guy and a and a. When I when I lived in a city that was kind of big, there's thirty thousand people that lived there, where where I grew up in a city or I grew up in the countryside where nobody lived, and the town that was close to me was a population of three thousand. So if you can get the idea, so when I moved to the city, like there is there was a couple times where I just like played with random like I didn't even know these people. They were just like friends of friends of friends, and I like and I drove them. I picked them up at his mom's house, and he was a little bit younger than me, so he was like was still in high school i know this is sounding weird <laughs> or maybe it's sounding weird if you're creepy like that if you're creepy like me um but yeah i, I took him over to my house and we, we smashed no, <laughs> that's funny uh yeah but we played smash bros and he didn't even he didn't even play the one i played i played melee and he he was into the new one at the time i don't i think it was i don't remember what he played smash 4 maybe that was and it's just like I don't know what happened to the to those vibes you know what i mean maybe that was just because i was like just kind of out of high school for a year or two or three years and i was just in that perfect time period or four years i think it was at that point it was in that time period where i was like still young enough that i connected with a lot of those younger people so it just happened naturally that i would like go to anime conventions and play in the smash bros tournament there play on random people and, and friendlies stuff like that you know what i mean talk to some random kid i didn't know who, who was dressed up as marth and i took a picture of him on my snapchat and he probably thought i was weird <laughs> but he didn't understand that for me that was like my first person i ever seen dressed up as marth and marth was like the the, my childhood swordsman i grew up with on smash bros and you know what i mean like i probably should have told him like a little bit about my backstory quick before i i don't know or maybe he was happy and maybe he was happy i i took a picture of him and i and i just didn't know i don't know But yeah, it's a little bit about uh, my history and what's going on with me and some of the nostalgia I've been going through and what we're going to do in 2024 to have a good year and, and to face some of those some of those nostalgic feelings again. The battle for nostalgia or battle uh, the battle the battle of nostalgia continues at least for a few more years here. Um, hopefully we can beat it this year though, honestly, and just like find a way to live life not feeling nostalgic all the fucking time. Not being trapped in that world. Seeking its fantasies. Seeking its f false pleasantries or whatever. Um. I mean, that's all the yammering I could do for today. I'm kind of sick of talking. A lot of confrontations. I have been playing some Halo here and there. And I uh, are getting a lot of confrontations with people. Usually because I'm getting fucking teabagged by somebody who used to know me a few years ago and they're like teabagging me for some reason and I get mad. And then they get destroyed and they still keep on teabagging me even though I'm winning the game by 30 kills or something. Yeah, it's just people are annoying, but other than that I've been actually things have been pretty good. 
I'm having some good times with my dogs. I gotta see them a little bit more. Sometimes I get too cooped up in my room. Uh, that's pretty much it for me, though. I'm trying to, I'm sad about Quake Champions just because I. Uh, I guess I can't expect like some game to come in and like be the rest of my life kind of game. Like I just gotta get that idea out of my head, you know. Now that. Quake Champions ain't a great game or anything. It's just... No game is going to fulfill an endless void in a human's heart. And... Especially not no game that you can only play for four hours out of the day. That's the only hours where there's enough people searching that it's actually fun. So, I mean... That doesn't come out into the game being bad. It's just the situation isn't ideal. Um, but yeah, I'm not giving up on that game, and I still want to prove that you can use the Azeron and do really well. I haven't had enough practice on the Azeron to really do that yet. Um, kind of sucks. I hate I hate getting out of new... Like, when I put a lot of work into something new, and I don't realize how good I am at it, and then I take a break, and I lose some of that skill, it's frustrating to me, because it's like... It's like, damn it, I didn't know how good I was. <laughs> I just wanted more, 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 but now I don't have that skill quite that skill I had a week ago when I was playing, you know. It's kind of crazy how fast new skill can go away as well. But I mean, you can get it back too, if there's no doubt about that. But yeah, I'll be back on Quake Champions soon. I got a lot of people who watched my commentaries and watched the montages. A couple commenters. and um, So I think there's potential there, especially with the fact that there's most likely a new new Bethesda or new id software game coming out in the next two years so it's just about time you know what I mean and whether they announce it or not or whether there's rumors or not it's just kind of obvious that it's you know it'd be like saying that they're isn't gonna be anything for from smash bros for 10 years or something like that like for sure there's gonna be something f for smash bros in the next 10 years you know what i mean or to, to doubt the fact that id software is doing something they're not just gonna give up on on that all of a sudden randomly i do wish quake champions was doing better though because if it was doing better there's a good chance that we would have already had another quake game to replace it or whatever or farther development or anything some people some people don't like doom 2016's multiplayer i can't really say how it holds up or anything but it was that it was damn fun back then especially for like how addicted to fort or to, to not fortnite to halo 3 that i was so the fact that i liked something else was kind of crazy Yeah, another weird thing, last last little thing I'm going to talk about, and then I'll head out for the new year, and I won't be doing too many commentaries unless something important comes up. I always say that, but yeah, there are periods where it's like two weeks go by, and I made a lot of videos, but I didn't really do any commentaries. So, I mean, that's probably going to happen again soon here, but I have been, like, having these sort of flashbacks to me a few years ago, I just kind of feel like I, I'm there, you know, I kind of feel like that me is here right now or something. And it just makes me want to do some of the things that I used to do and stuff like that. And some of the things I used to dream about and want to do. Like Halo montages and, and life comment and life, uh, not commentaries, like life documentaries fused with Halo montages and stuff like that. Story, stories fancy video editing photo editing artistic videos where there it's like a fusion of of art artistic stuff 
3D stuff, story, like abstract videos, stuff like that. Any, any, any and all types of things like that that are very creative that sh kind of shovel shovel your life story and your life's journey and your thoughts and your creativity all into like a video and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's been I've been kind of having flashbacks to that younger me that used to actually like have completed videos that are like half completed or completed like sitting on my hard drives and stuff. But I just kind of, I guess I got the urge to remember like who that was, like who that was back then. Like who, who was I when I was wanting to do all that stuff? And, you know, why did I feel so separated from my friends and my girlfriends and everything at the time? And, and now it's like, we're actually separated and we've actually been apart for like 10 years. So like, why the hell? Sometimes I feel more connected to them than I did back then when I was with them, you know? It's just kind of weird. So that's like another another thing that's been on my mind, especially today. Um, but yeah, that's the 2024 New Year's commentary from Mike on the Mic. Hope you guys are doing well. Wish, wishing you guys all well every day. Um, had a couple nice people who sent me some messages uh over overnight while i was sleeping on new year's and that was nice a couple people from youtube that follow the channel so that that made my uh, morning nice when i woke up and noticed some people were thinking about me um so thanks thanks to everyone who did that And uh, that's pretty much it for me. I'm gonna go feed the feed my turtle and drink some water and go for a walk. Come back and do some boomer shooters. Should be fun. I don't even know why I, sh I say should be. Every time I played a boomer shooter, it's been fun. There's only like one time where the I didn't really drive with the game, and it was still kind of fun. No, no, that wasn't fun. <laughs> I'm just being too nice. All right, this haunting ass music is getting to me. I feel like I'm playing Ghost Song for some reason. I do. I never even know I haven't played that game yet. I do. I do want to get that game. It's just it's another one of those that looks like it's it got an eighty percent out of a hundred reviews, and it's actually probably a little better than that, especially for the on sale price. But who knows? Could be too generic or too flat. I don't know. <laughs> this game's got some generic and flat in it. Tarnishing of Juxty has got a lot of generic and, fl and, and flat in it, and it's also fucking got jank fighting, so that's even worse. Jank, slow, annoying fighting. Some of, there is some satisfaction there, but it's buried in that game. Kind of like the ending of uh, Salt and Sanctuary. <laughs> the last, like, seven bosses are fucking a grind, and that's not really that fun. There's only a bit of satisfaction in there when you get lucky and get a run that works or whatever. Oh, uh, but yeah, I gotta check up on the doggos too. And I don't, you know, it's tempting to get the new Final Fantasy, but I don't. I'm not really the biggest. Like I said in another video, I'm not really the biggest fan of how Final Fantasy does character action games, and and I just. I don't understand how more games can't be better than Dark Souls when Dark Souls is like sort of by today's standards extremely simple and small and short. You know what I mean? And then the graphics aren't good either. Like it doesn't make any sense to me that that game still like is head and shoulders more satisfying and better on that first playthrough than these big budget games that Square Enix is pumping out and these big budget games that other developers are pumping out. You know what I mean? I just don't understand. Because you, obviously you can make a game that one-ups Dark Souls. It looks like Lies of P is that game. That straight up not from... It's not from, from software, but it's... Somehow... Continuing that legacy. 
I feel like there's a lot of games that I don't know if they never tried to continue the legacy or they just try to cash in on the Souls genre or what they're doing wrong. But just kind of a odd genre. Kind of where the Metroidvania genre was in early on after the Game Boy Advance era where the Metroidvania genre just kind of was quiet from like 20, what, 2000 and like six ish to, to fucking 2017 when Hollow Knight came out. That there's definitely some games in between there, but nothing's comparable from that that to the new to the modern day indie game time period from like 2017 till now ish. You know, rough, rough estimates. Like the, there's so many good Metroidvania, so many good platformers. So there, a lot of them. The price went down on a lot of them. So like you used to be paying like 30, 40 bucks for a fresh copy of Hollow Knight when it first came out or something, and now you're paying like five dollars, seven dollars. You buy a used copy of some of these games on eBay for cheap as well if you wanted a physical. It's just it's inter interesting to think about. It's interesting. <laughs> I can't talk to people. Anyways, I want to have a good rest of my day, and I'm sick of commentating, so catch you guys on the road. Much love.